from the desk at Old Mates. You're watching Backyard Tech. During this week here at Backyard Tech, we've been involved in a bit of a retro tech series regarding an Onkyo TA-R22 auto reverse cassette deck from around 1986. In the first three parts of this video, we did a visual inspection, a power on and test, and cleaned the heads, capstan and pinch roller. Well, for part four of this video series, let's get those levels down to where they should be. G'day everyone, thank you for tuning in, continuing our retro tech series regarding the Onkyo TA-R22 cassette deck from around 1986 uh, for the other half's parents' church. Today we're going to try and get those levels down to where they should be on playback. Now, the worst thing about all this is, and for those of us who watch 12 volt vids, we know he uses a cassette professionally recorded but also has a 440Hz tone he can use <coughs> Excuse me for level checking. I've lost that cassette, but the cassette that I've currently got in the Onkyo was recorded in a recording studio by me on a Tascam 3 head cassette deck at 0 dBVU. So with that thing at the moment peaking at plus 2 plus 3 dBVU or plus 2 plus 3 dBP, it's a little high. So we're going to have to bring back um, PBLL and PBLR. Right, which are on the actual circuit board. I had a sneaking suspicion and had it confirmed that someone has been into that deck who didn't know what they were doing properly and wound up the playback volume. We've mentioned in the past, talking about audio, that driving analog audio isn't that bad. We know when you're recording in a professional environment, you can drive the two-inch tape. But once you come to a professional release and you add Dolby and other things over the top, most professionally recorded cassettes will get to 0 dB and no more. That's it. So 0 dB VU or 0 dBP. We've got to get that one down. Now, having lost my 440 hertz tape and tone, one of the tracks in there is so heavily compressed with almost no stereo separation, it's as good as mono. So I'm going to use that track to get those levels down. Now, you're probably going to sit there and say, old mate, you're being pedantic. Well, true, but I have been asked to get this deck going to the best of what I believe will suit both what I believe it should be set to, but also suit where it's going and what it's going to be used for, right? So, for Thursdays here at the Backyard Tech Channel, let's continue with this retro tech series on that Onkyo TA-R22 cassette deck. And let's get those peak music, let's get those, let's get the DBVU down to where it should be. Let's get into it. Alrighty, so I've got the top off this again. We have our two playback level adjustments, playback left and playback right. And they are, well, I reckon they've got to come down a notch or a notch or two to get them right. Um, they are slightly out of whack. Now, the track that I've got on here, which I've got to go find, um, I think they're in the middle of side A or side B, I don't remember. But the thing is, what I did, and audio people will know exactly what I'm talking about with this, um, the track is heavily compressed to the point where it's almost hard limited. And therefore, the because I ran a comp two compressors, right, compressor on the left and right, um, it's so heavily compressed, it's almost hard limited on each channel, which basically means this is running almost in a dead mono uh, scenario. There's a little bit of stereo separation, but not a hell of a lot. As I said, this is a tape that I mucked around with stuff on. Okay, so I actually got a, uh, some music uh, that I used to do this with. So, and it's copyrighted music, so I can't even play it, even if I wanted to. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go hunting for the um, 
for the track. As I said, it's either in the middle of side A or B of this cassette. Um, I'm going to adjust the levels to make sure that both reverse and playback is the same level on here. Now, sometimes these can get thrown out. I'm not saying it always happens, but occasionally it does, depending on the condition of the head. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to find the track. I'm then going to get my screwdrivers, adjust those little pots there, those two pots. So this one and this one. For those who aren't aware, that's the bias adjustment there. And then the other two, which is this one and that one, are the record. So you've got playback, record, and bias adjustments. Now, I'm not going to worry with the bias adjustments because this won't be being used to record. All right, I don't need to record. I don't need to set the bias for left and right on the record. Um, I just need to set this thing to play. There is going to be no line-in capability into this deck. So I'm not worried about the recording. I'm just worried about the playback. Alrighty, let me get my small screwdrivers, find this track, and uh, see if I can get it right. Alrighty, well, I'm getting there. You can see already that it's down, um, which is good. I might be able to play a little bit of this. This is the track that I... I used and you can see there that the output on the Yamaha is not that bad either but you can see as I said this tracks almost totally mono um, but it's a hell of a lot lower um, this track I'm playing is recorded with no Dolby um, these it appears as though with this one the Dolby does not affect the PPM all right some cassette decks, you if you engage Dolby, you'd see this drop off. But this one seems to come, it seems to go to this before it gets to the Dolby. But you can see there, I mean, it's just hitting zero now, which is where it should be. And you can see it's almost totally mono. So I'm happy with that. Very happy. Didn't realize, it's actually, if you look down in here, there is a light there which is nice. So there's our Dolby Proc, and as you can see, I've bought the levels. <coughs> Excuse me, the levels aren't all the way down, but they were enough to drop it down. And this is where I like to see a cassette deck, just hitting that zero dB. So there we go. Job done on that. Because I mean, if you looked at yesterday's video, or day before yesterday's, we we're up here at plus three. Some people might say, and look, we've, we've mentioned this in the argument analog v digital audio before, that you can drive analog audio because you, the human ear doesn't mind analog distortion, assuming the signal doesn't sound terrible. So driving an analog cassette isn't that bad. The problem you sometimes get, though, with certain types of cassette decks, not all types, but certain types, is if you're driving this too hard on playback, or record for that matter, if you're driving this too hard on playback, you can actually damage other components like capacitors and that on the board. And that is something that I've taken very seriously to say that this is where it should be. It should just hit that zero dB. And you can see there, the signal's almost mono. Now, that's why I've used the track here on side A to do it because it's actually got more of a mono feel to it than anything else. Um, so what I'll do now is go look for a stereo track and I'll see how the stereo separation is. All right, well, here's a track with a bit more stereo separation. Uh, it's slightly right biased, but it's still better than it was. And as you can see there, it's just getting to that zero dB. So job done. There we go. So the levels are now adjusted on this, which I'm really happy about. The heads are clean. Everything in there is done. Um, I have tested the levels Dolby, no Dolby. Um, so I'm, I'm actually really, really happy. There we go. Old mate's actually got a... It's a shame that this deck got screwed with. And I, I look, I'll be honest with you. Um, a lot of people would say this about me too. And okay, that's fine. You can. 
when you get some people getting into things that they don't know properly, and they tend to say, oh, you know, I'll get in and see what I can do. Well, these, the playback variable resistors or Rio stats, whatever you want to call them on there, were way too high. And like I said, this was recorded in a recording studio on a three-head Tascam, so a professional Tascam deck. At I had it, I, the bet, the biggest peak I had was zero dB VU. And as you can see, I've now got it. So you can see that track's got a bit more stereo separation in it. I think that's actually a raw track straight from CD. Um, yeah, it is. Okay. So there we go. Anyway, one Onkyo cassette deck cleaned and adjusted and working really, really well. I didn't realize there was actually a lighting behind there, but there's, it's actually a light pipe. So at night, you know, you can turn your lights off, you'll still be able to see what this thing's up to. And the good thing is, is all the lights seem to work. I mean, even record works, doesn't it? Oh, it's all right, it doesn't matter if record doesn't work. They're not gonna be recording to it anyway. <laughs> So there we go. Now, the unfortunate thing is that black backing plate that goes over here has disappeared. Um, they don't know where it is, which is unfortunate. So it'll just have to stay like that, unfortunately. But uh, yeah, someone's been into this. But there we go. So I mean, it, it happens though. You see, it gives me the irrits because you see good equipment like this from reputable brands like Onkyo and that, and yeah, someone's got into it and you know, took out the chassis and removed the backing plate and they've lost the backing plate. So there we are. One Onkyo TR, TA-R22, cleaned and uh, made to work correctly, which is always good. So the other half's parents, church, pastor and everyone like that will be uh, will be very, very happy. I love this multifunction display. <laughs> and of course... You know, computer controlled, full auto reverse. Always fun. There we are. Anyway, guys, enjoy the rest of your Thursday and I'll catch you around the channel for tonight's convo. Have a good one all. Cheers. This has been another presentation from Backyard Tech.